So one of the things that I think was probably most people would think would be pretty difficult is you went to Chip Ganassi and you said, hey, buddy, I want to buy your team. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't seem like an easy conversation to break the ice with Chip with. I, I, I've never had any any of those conversations, but he's always a pretty, it just seems like a pretty thick wall to, to, to bust yeah. through to, to have those conversations. How in the world do you go to Chip Ganassi and have that conversation to say, hey, I think this is a good idea, and then wind up with everything that you have now and, and Chip's in IndyCar and not NASCAR anymore? Yeah, I mean, a, a tremendous competitive advantage that, that Trackhouse has had is the fact that we were able to make that acquisition and be able to keep a lot of people in that building together, working together, where for a lot of the people, it was really just changing, kind of changing a logo on their shirt, but as far as their work goes, but then trying to create this entirely new environment and culture in the business. So to answer that question, I would have to, I would have to talk about this incredible journey that I went through in 2021, trying to acquire a charter. Because if you remember in 21, when we first started, we were, we were leasing a charter from Spire. Okay. So we were racing, but I had no asset. I had no way to do anything after 2021. I had to find a way to go acquire a charter. And I was involved in all of the negotiations of every charter that traded that year, the 13, the 95, you know, some of these others. And I lost every single one of them. Hmm. And and I, and I just got to a point where I'm like, this is going to be a one and done. Like, I'm going to come do this for one year and then go right back to figuring out what's next. If I can't get this done, I have to think really creatively about how to get to where I'm trying to get here. So, you know, I was, look, I'd raced at Ganassi for a number of years and I knew a lot of people in the building and, you know, Chip had had, you know, had some, some tough moments in the years leading up to 2021 with DC Solar and losing Kyle Larson. And just, you know, I just knew that it was a tough, ton of a tough time for him. And, you know, I'm not going to tell you that I, that I just picked, you know, I just picked up the phone and Had with all this confidence this and yeah, I mean, I was, I mean, it was two or three weeks figuring out how do I, like, what are the, what's the first thing I even say yeah. when he answers, how you doing, Justin? Like, what, what's the first thing that, that you say? And I've, you know, I got to the point where I'm like, well, you just got to just do it. You just got to do it. And so, um, so I dropped my kid off at school and I was driving back to the house and, and I called him and, and I said, you know, look, I have, I have big dreams and big plans and big ambitious vision for, for my company. And, um, but I'm not going to get there if I don't make a serious investment. And I just said, you know, if, if figuring out a way to do something here around your charters is something you're willing to have an adult discussion about, then I'd love to have the opportunity to have that discussion. It's mm -hmm. basically how I framed it. And, um, uh, and Chip, and Chip answered, you know, he said, you know, look, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. Um, you know, I've had a lot of success. I've got this great Cadillac program on the sports car side. We're expanding our operations on the IndyCar side. Uh, and he said, so let's talk. Hmm. And, you know, I think that there's no grand design behind it. There's no, there's no real sort of piece of wisdom or anything like that. It's just, I've been telling people that sometimes you just got to pick up the phone and make the call and right. just throw caution to the wind. And luckily for me, I had a great, uh, have a great relationship with Chip. Um, and I, you know, flew up to Pittsburgh and walked through what my vision was for a company. And I think that at the end of the day, I think what he saw in me and what I was trying to accomplish is not a lot different than what he was trying to do 20 years ago when he came into the game and was working with Felix Sabates and was, you know, trying to build out his NASCAR thing. And I think for him, I think that if, and you know, I don't want to speak for him, but I sort of got the impression maybe that when his days of being a NASCAR Cup Series team owner were over, he would, he wanted to do something like he did with someone like me, someone that was going to take it with the same ambition and passion and love for the sport that he'd had when he got started. And, um, and then, you know, put our own spin on it. So, well, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a crazy story because you, you look at Chip Ganassi and I don't think most people would have picked up that phone and actually had that conversation. And I think, you know, obviously you guys had a relationship that you felt comfortable enough to even start the yeah. conversation and it's turned into what has made Trackhouse what it is. It's given you somewhere to work. It's given you the yeah. foundation for your employees. And, and in today's world, it's, that's the way that you have to do it to get started because yeah. it's such an undertaking to start it from scratch, to go, buy a shop and hire the mm -hmm. people because it's to get the right people is, is tough. And so I think as you look at, you look back at that charter scenario, and now you look at everything that you guys have gone through from an ownership standpoint over 
I guess we can just call it two years, right? Yeah. Two years. Where do you think that all that landed as far as the the charters and the team owners? And you know, you've got a couple of teams that didn't sign the charter. Where does that leave everything as far as the landscape of of ownership and how everybody feels about where they landed with NASCAR? Obviously, you felt fine about it to to move on. We've heard Rick Hendrick talk about it. And now you've got these two outliers out there that are like, eh, we're going to stick it out a little bit longer, which to me seems confusing you know, from from what they do. But everybody has their right to 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 do what they need to do. So where do you think that ended? And, and how do we all move forward knowing that it's going to happen again in yeah. seven years? And, and I look at, for example, I look at what IndyCar just did. Obviously, Roger Penske doesn't think it's a bad idea. He just did the exact same thing on, on the IndyCar side for the most part. So wh- how do you feel about how all that ended and, and where you are going forward? Well, I think... We're all, I think we're all still trying to figure that out, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you know, the ink is barely dry uh, on the paper right now. So it's, and so much focus has been on negotiating the points of the charter agreement that there hasn't been a lot of time really spent on, okay, what is, what does the first week look like after we after we all sign it? You know, really what is, what is the nuts and bolts around the relationship? Because the relationship is going to be a little bit different now because of certain elements of the charter agreement, just how we communicate with NASCAR, what the committees are like, you know, kind of new initiatives and how we're going to work together. Together, that it's different? That, yeah, that it's different. Because I, I think from my standpoint, it needed to be a little different. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's good. Okay. I mean, I think it's good. I mean, one of the things that we've one of the silver linings that has come out of all of this negotiations is, you know, we've really had to look at the sport, where we are as sport, what moves the needle, what's going to fuel growth, what is a what does healthy teams look like? What does a healthy NASCAR look like? And um you know, I tell people like when I went through the process of raising our investment round for for track house that we did with Avenue Capital this summer, you know, people ask me what that process is like. And I said, Man, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for the world because I had to really look at my business. I had to really look at my business and get out of the weeds of the day to day and look like what is track house? Mm-hmm. You know, where's it going? And how does it stack up in the ecosystem of other sports teams and entertainment? properties and things like that. And I think that we all kind of went through or have been going through a little bit of the same thing with NASCAR. So, um, so where are we at today? Well, um, I think, you know, obviously we're in a spot where everybody, just about everybody was comfortable signing it. Um, I think that eventually the day was going to come when we NASCAR said, like, we're done. Like we've been, we've been doing this for long enough. I mean, this thing's taken two years. Um, and, you know, I was prepared for the day to come where NASCAR said, we're not, you know, we, we've moved here, we've moved there, we've not moved here. Um, this is the deal. And so I took a real hard look at that and determined, you know, can I continue to be enthusiastic and uh, bullish on the business that I'm able to build with this agreement? And ultimately I landed, yeah, I, I can, because we've been successful over the last one. And uh, and this one is, there's a lot of elements, this one that are, uh, that are going to be good. There are some elements that leave things to be desired for sure. Yeah. Um, NASCAR has got a lot of power they have a lot of influence and, um, you know, they, they definitely have come our way on things. Um, but I still feel like the sport is in as about a good spot now as it's probably ever been certainly in my, in my lifetime. I mean, I think that there's with so much competition in the landscape for consumers and for viewership, I think NASCAR is, is performing really well. I think the fact that, you know, it, we have race cars that go 200 miles an hour and we do it every single week live on television. That's a powerful thing in, in business right now. Um, so, you know, I'm, I just got to a spot where, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with, um, with where we landed. I mean, I, I, I feel like I can continue to build a great business yeah. around where we landed. So uh, that, that's what I would say about that. I, you know, as far as the other two, I mean, you know, I, I certainly, I certainly admire their conviction. I certainly admire their, um, their willingness to stand up for what they're fighting for, for what they believe in. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it goes. Yeah. I don't know what comes out of it because I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're going to wake up tomorrow preparing cars for the, not literally, but preparing cars for the Daytona 500. So it's going to come really, really quickly. Um, So we'll see where that goes. Hey, 
race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.